um, um, ambition in my in my kind of line of work can mean a lot of things, but it's it's more prevalent to me when I am because I'm not I'm a contract worker, so I'm not always employed, and it really becomes a thing that I actually think about when I'm not employed, and it's about getting up in the morning and, and, and getting out there, uh, getting out into the day, whether that be going for a run or a, or a bike ride or just a walk. Um, and I can, I sort of look back on a day if I'm if I've got nothing to do on a day, and I look back on it and I go, man, I left my room twice, like that wasn't a good day. And I think that's about that to me is going, man, I didn't, do, yeah. In essence, I didn't have much ambition that day to do anything. Um, but at the same time, I don't feel good about it. I don't feel, I don't feel great that I, I, I wouldn't have gotten up. You know, so I. Yeah, to me, it's 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 small things like getting up, getting out into the day. Do you think of yourself as ambitious? I don't. I don't know. I, I feel like I don't sort of think about it. Um, I reflect on what I've done and where I where I am compared to where I was ten years ago, and I go, that was some. You know, I did some work, and there was some, some made some ballsy choices, and and and, and I'm definitely a better and, and bigger person than I was, you know, a decade ago. And I go, ambition must have had something to play, you know, and uh, in in those last last few years, and gone. I just haven't really thought about it uh, till kind of now, I suppose. Yeah. Well, no, not kind of now. It's just nothing that really, it's not at the front, at the forefront of my mind. Yeah, so you just haven't been a person that sits there and goes, right, I'm going to do this by this time and you're not a... Yeah, I'm not a good goal setter for myself unless yeah. someone goes to set goals. I won't, yeah, I don't, um, <laughs> no, I'm not great at setting goals. Um, I feel like I'm a, I'm a... You know, there are people who live in the past and people who live in the future and people who live in the now. I'm a real now person. Like, I don't like the idea of plans and thinking about like what I'm going to be doing next year. I go, I freeze up, I go, I go, I just live life now and see where it takes me. Um, yeah, it's, it's not, I don't, it's, it's just sort of how I am as a person. Um, I also don't feel like I'm being sort of strung along, I'm, I mean, um, with my work and, and, and music, uh, like I'm a, I'm a director of a company and I have one fifth of a say in what we do and how we, how we move forward and, uh, you know, and those kinds of, that's a challenge for me because I got I got to, I got a plan, and planning is like not my not my forte, um, but I, I, I do it, I suppose. And I'm in New York right now. For for us to start in humble beginnings, earning 50 bucks a gig, and seven years ago in Auckland to to definitely ticking off one a one off the bucket list. Um, yeah, that took a lot of planning on my part, as well as the rest of the boys, but on my part, definitely. Um, so how do you think ambition is viewed in New Zealand? Hmm. Um, I feel like you can't talk about uh, ambition in New Zealand as a, as a whole and not mention the tall poppy syndrome. That we are very, we, that's, we're quick to cut ourselves down. We're quick to cut each other down. Um, you know, I'd, I'd even say in, in, in the world of rugby, which we're one of the best in the world at, we, we're still going to, we still cut ourselves down there. And so I feel like ambition is limited back home, like, um, like we don't, you're a bit of a, you're a bit of a bot if you're out there talking about how you want to want to do big things and and achieve 
achieve whatever you want to achieve in life and um yeah it's, it's not i don't i don't feel like it's great i mean it's not that we don't have um kiwis that do great things um and i feel like those people come with you know truckloads of drive and ambition um but yeah there's definitely a limit we definitely hold ourselves back we're our, we're our own worst enemies um, I don't think that's good I have I don't I can't think of how to change that because it's a it's where do you quite think it psyche. comes from <laughs> Sheesh. sorry I get you to do my work for me no but... no no I um because I mean it's 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 not just in Pakeha culture, you know, kaori te kumara. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a, an old Māori problem. Yeah. The, how the kumara never talks or speaks of its sweetness. Um, and that's a big, that's a big saying in, in sort of my, my life. Like, hey man, just, to me I see it as more like to, like, be the best don't talk about being the best so I don't I, I don't see that as a limiter a limiting kind of um, uh, whakatauki or mm. proverb I, I, I see it as a um, less hui more doing mm-hmm. um, and I, yeah, I kind of live like that like I, I, I feel I feel quite weird about talking about what I do I feel like in, in, in America they, they love to talk about what they do and people will tell you their life story. Whereas I'd rather sort of show people like, what it, and it, it, that that comes with being a performer. I do get to get on stage every night and, and show people a bit of where I'm from and a bit of who I am. I feel like it's heard better in, in that kind of context. Like I, I have this, I've just yeah, we, we have the coolest opportunity to be able to tell our stories from our place on a stage where people sort of have paid to come and watch us or are just there because they want to watch what we do and that's a cool thing so like I've kind of gone around the, our lack of ambition by doing a, doing a thing that allows me to be ambitious without talking too much about it and having to talk about it whether I just do it the only way you succeed without failing is by taking very few risks or being super lucky. Mm, yes. I think when you don't do things that are risky, the upside is lower as well, right? But you could have, you know, you could have come here and had it not work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is, that's always a risk. Every time we go on tour and, and leave, you know, leave, leave New Zealand, especially for especially to come on the other to the other side of the world. It's always the risk of something going wrong, and um, you know, we try and leave. You know, try and like get on top of that risk by paying a lot in insurance. But you know, we we toured Asia three for two months uh, at the end of last year, October, November, and everything that could go wrong went wrong. What do we do? To, how do we? How do we think? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think we were stronger now than we were six months ago, because of because of things like that. Mm. And then so we were quite um, nervous about coming here. Um, I mean, I'm just still got four or five days there. <laughs> Something going on, but so far it's been so good. And you go, yes, this is what we do it for. Like this, these are the wins. Mm-hmm. This is this is worth the risk.